It's dark and rainy and gross out and I just don't know how to light videos. But you know what? Today is not about the makeup. Today is about roasting myself. We're gonna look back on my first favorites video on my channel all the way back in 2019 and go through all the products and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on them and see if I still like them. And if you're new here, my name's Kate. I have a corporate nine to five job and so YouTube is my passion. And that means I need products that are really easy to use and fast to apply, something I can practically apply in the dark. I like to keep a more minimal collection and my whole thing on YouTube is brutally honest, thorough reviews so that you can have all the information you need to make the best decision as a consumer. I do tons of application footage and swatches and different lighting, so if that sounds like your thing, I hope you'll subscribe. And now, let's get into it. Gonna roast myself, uh -uh, roast myself, roast myself, woo! Oh, I'm nervous! Okay, let's see how this goes. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my- Oh god, it's already so bad. It's the typical YouTuber thing. What's up, guys? <gasps> Okay, let's do this channel. Um, I'm stoked because I'm filming at night for the first time right now. I'm sure you can tell it's a different setup. Uh, I finally bought some light. Okay, now I'm realizing nobody cares <laughs> what time of day it is or what the weather is. Shit, okay. So I've got some box lights. I've got a ring light with a nice little tan. We're just gonna get to the point here. First up, I have my Makeup Forever Invisible. Has anyone been here since that intro? I loved that intro so much. John made it for me and I miss it. I love that song. Okay, let's do this. We'll cover foundation. I've already talked about this in a video, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I just don't know why people don't talk about this more. It's so good. It's Yeah, it was so good. I am so angry that Makeup Forever reformulated that. And they've done that so many times. They have a ton of different iterations of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation, but the invisible cover was my absolute holy grail for such a long time. It was thin. It felt like skincare meets makeup, but it wasn't overly dewy. It had a natural, but slightly dewy finish. Perfect shade match for me. Oh, I just loved that foundation so much. The current iteration of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation contains fragrance. And unfortunately it really irritated my skin. It actually gave me a really bad rash. So this one is a total heartbreak moment, but the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation is my current favorite. The Armani Luminous Silk Foundation is even more lightweight and even thinner than the Makeup Forever Invisible Cover Foundation. And it is my perfect, perfect foundation. It does contain fragrance, but for some reason, this one doesn't bother me at all. And I actually prefer the finish of it. It has more of a satin finish, so it's not dewy, it's not matte. Makeup Forever was a little bit more on the dewy side. And I would say it's medium to full coverage. It's so customizable. It's a makeup artist's favorite for a reason. I truly don't think I could find a better formula. Next up, I've got the e.l.f. Wow Brow. Um, this is dope. This is like so cheap. Um, I have it in the shade, it doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure mine was the shade Taupe. Um, it is just a tiny, tiny. Okay. <laughs> Elf Wow Brow, it is dope, still dope. It's a great product and it's like $4. I loved that brow product. In fact, I don't know, it's kind of reminding me that I wanna I wanna try it again. I liked it because it wasn't a typical brow gel. It felt like it had little fibers in it that would kind of build up the hair and it was on the more dry side. So I actually liked that. I felt like the Glossé Boy Brow is a little bit wet. A lot of brow gels are wet and they get messy and then they get all over your skin. The Elf Wow Brow was pretty decently tinted and I would like to use a little bit of a brow pencil first and then go in with the elf wow brow and I felt like because it had almost this like fibrous quality to it it really filled in the areas of my brows where there are some sparse hairs and it's a fantastic product I mean elf has phenomenal formulas at a mind-blowing price point now my favorite are these three products so my ultimate combination is just the L'Oreal brow stylist definer it's basically like the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, brow whiz but for just like $10. And then I go in with the Live Tinted Brow Gel. And what I like about this is it's kind of like a brow gel meets a brow wax. It has more hold than a typical brow gel like Glossier Boy Brow, but it's not crunchy or flaky like a lot of other brow gels can be. So this is my perfect combination. I'm also really enjoying the Bodyography Epic Brow, which I'm wearing on my brows today. It's a brow felt tip pen on one end and then a spoolie and a brow gel on the other end. So I like that it has everything in one place. But honestly, Elf Wow Brow is dope and I would totally use it again. So I'm gonna jump into blush and my recent discovery is the Honest Beauty Cream Blush in the shade Rose Pink. It's this super pretty, like, I would describe it as like a dusty, peachy, rosy nude like I mean you can see it literally it just it just looks like my my finger it's on this finger 
Um, and that's because it is like a really nice nude color. Maybe I'll just tap a little bit in. Um, and you can see nude is quite a good description. It's just um, slightly rosy. It's really subtle and that's why I like it. Um, and I like that it's in this pan format. Damn, just... that looked really nice. I totally forgot how beautiful that was. The Honest Beauty cream blushes used to be my jam. I loved the way that they looked on the cheeks because they weren't too dewy. They just had this beautiful skin-like finish and I thought the colors were absolutely stunning. But over time, I realized that cream and liquid blushes really fade from my cheeks fast. So I do prefer powder blushes. And for me, the Honest Beauty blushes were a little bit on the sticky side and I just don't really like the feeling of like a bomb kind of formula. But if you do like that kind of formula, it looks gorgeously airbrushed on the cheek. So it really is a fantastic product, even though I don't own it or use it anymore. Is the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blush. This is just a little like 100 point perk I got at Sephora. So glad I got it because, ooh, it's hard to open. Uh oh, wait, okay. Um, this color is so nice. It's in the shade Mauve Sunrise and it's got this texture that's like, you know, it's like those old like Maybelline, um, like bouncy dream cushion shit. It's like that. Um, if it we get the point. I'm so sad that Bare Minerals discontinued the Bounce and Blur formula. Ah, oh, that was one of my favorite blushes of all time. It was this gorgeous cream to powder formula. Felt very similarly to the MAC Glow Play blushes if you've tried those. Looked beautiful on the cheeks, had a little bit of radiance running throughout it, but not too much, so it was super shimmery, and they nailed that formula. It was such a gorgeous cream to powder formula. You get kind of the airbrushed finish and the longevity of a powder, but you get the kind of blendability and the skin-like quality of a cream. I just loved the Bounce and Blur formula, and Mauve Sunrise was really not a mauve at all. It was just a warm pink, and it was gorgeous. I also really missed Blurred Buff was a beautiful warm tan. Bare Minerals really bothers me sometimes because they have launched so many of my all-time favorite products, and then a year later, they just discontinue them. So Bare Minerals, always breaking my heart. If you discontinue the highlighting blush and Opal Glow, we got problems. Another recent discovery for me that I am obsessed with. And I, I don't use that term lightly. I am obsessed with the Ilia Color Haze in the shade Waking Up. I have never been like a brown nude blush kind of gal. Um, I've just never liked that color on me, but this, it's totally, totally different. Um, as yeah, it's like nice and brownie and glossy. I just, I wanna put everything on my cheeks and I know I can't, but it's just this, stunning nude color that's weirdly complex like i don't i don't know if it's picking up on camera at all with this new light setup oh man such a throwback the Ilya color haze in waking up i wore that i'll never forget i wore that in my 30th birthday get ready with me when i was filming at an airbnb in joshua tree and i don't know if for some reason you want to watch it i'll leave it linked on the screen above i love the way that blush looked it also smelled like marshmallows or something it smelled amazing for, for a cream blush again it was kind of sticky on the cheeks so i just didn't love it and what that means to me when a cream blush is sticky is i just feel like it's not quite as blendable as others, but I did totally use that up. I didn't declutter it. I 100% used that up, but I have been thinking about the color haze and waking up all the time recently, and I'm wondering if any of you have tried it, what you think about it. It is a weirdly complex shade. I totally agree with what I said. It was like a beigey brown. It wasn't too warm. It wasn't neutral though. It was on the warm side. It had a little bit of almost like a dusty rose in it as well, so it was a great color for me as a neutral blush. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I gotta add that back to my cart because I haven't tried that formula in so long, but that color has just stuck with me. And I wonder if I have anything in my collection with this whole nude blush deep dive that I'm planning. Um, I wonder if I can maybe find a powder version of that. But if you have the Ilia color hazes, how do you feel about the formula? Do you think that they were kind of sticky or do you like the way that they look on the cheeks? Moving right along, I've got the Kosas Color and Light Cream duos in Velvet Melon. Um, I actually really don't like this blush formula. I find that I have to layer it like four times and as I blend, the color just completely disappears. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard people say this, but this blush literally like gets eaten up by my face. My face eats the blush. However, the highlighter is different. The highlighter for some reason goes on so creamy and sets down. I'll swatch both of them for you just so you have it. 
Yeah, I bet you. Yeah, I hate that blush. Oh my God, I hated that blush. That's the kind of situation where back in 2019, I was buying a lot of products that people were recommending and really hyping up, and I hadn't yet found my own unique makeup style. I hadn't yet realized that I prefer products with more of a soft matte finish. I hadn't yet realized that cream blush just disappeared on my cheeks. And I hated that blush color because it was a very light peachy orange shade, but I did like that highlighter. I thought it was a beautiful highlighter. Kostas though, Kostas is, is a different girl now. And it's so sad to see. I loved the original Kostas. Oh, when they had those super chic lipsticks with the black and white packaging, rose water, stardust, undone. Those were some of the most beautiful, sophisticated, like well thought out lipstick shades I had ever tried. I loved what Sheena originally did with the brand. And now just seeing what Kostas has become, it just looks like kids makeup with like neon packaging and just really subpar formulas. It's super sad. In my opinion, the brand is just something that I don't even recognize. And I think the formulas are extremely disappointing, but their original products I thought were absolutely fantastic. Okay, eyeshadows. On my eyes today, I have the uh, Rowan 52 Degrees Cool Palette, and it's pretty much my favorite discovery of 2019 period. I feel like this product makes um, makes kind of tricky colors really easy. So today, like I have this um, gunmetal blue gray just all over my lids. I didn't even blend it into the crease. I just whacked it on my lid with a finger and that was that. Um, I already have a, you can see like that's freaking pigmented. It's intense. Um, and when I swatch it, you can see it just is so reflective and oh, baby Kate is making me just feel so many different feelings. It's interesting because I'm, I have a kind of cool toned blue eyeshadow on today and I was wearing the Rowan 52 degrees palette in that video. And I did not plan to do this video today when I sat down to film my makeup. It's so funny how shy I was on camera too. Like I was very soft spoken. I was just very pleasant. So different from how I am now. I totally agree. I still have all of my Rowan palettes. I think that they are unlike anything I've ever tried. I've always described them as adult finger painting because they really do you feel like you are kind of playing with paint or playing with some type of, I don't know, fun like watercolor or something. Not in terms of the texture, but I guess in terms of the finish or the creativity, they always just make me feel creative and like I'm having fun. Now, I don't reach for the Rowan quads as much as I used to because as I've gotten older, my lids have gotten a lot more dry. Yeah. Hi, I just want to check on you. How are you doing? I love you. Doing hot? Come here. You look cool. I look cool? Who's this sexy girl? You look cool. Who's this sexy girl? Will you say hi to YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Sorry, man. There, there we go. Hey, YouTube, what's going on? I'm John. <laughs> You're cute. Okay, bye. Have fun with your friends. I will. <laughs> cute. <laughs> Okay, what was I saying? The Rowan quads, I don't reach for them quite as much anymore because as I've gotten older, my lids have gotten drier. I tend to wear a lot more moisturizer on my lids now. And so I find that the Rowan quads crease more than they even used to. And they're a very creasy product. But what's nice about them is, you know, if you're just going out for like a concert or a dinner or something, I think it's perfectly fine, especially if you have a little bit of a primer. And since they don't actually set at all, if they do crease on your lids, you can just kind of rub them back in and then it looks fine. It's so interesting. The universe works in very mysterious ways. Ways. Weirdly, I was on a walk outside my house and I was just thinking about the Rowan 52 degree squad And I wasn't even thinking about this video. I hadn't come up with this concept yet I hadn't picked this video to to roast and I was just thinking you know what? I really need to revisit those Rowan quads So this is clearly my sign that I need to take out some uh, Rowan quads the product She got me into is the ritual defeat eye soot in the shade half light There's no chance you're gonna be able to see this on camera because this little freaking top is so small, I can't get my finger in there and it sucks and Ritual Defeat should change that because everybody says the same thing about these, that they're <sighs> so funny. Totally agree. Man, the Ritual Defeat eye soots, they were so hard to dig into. I feel like they recently updated the packaging. I haven't tried them, but I, I feel like I remember hearing that through the grapevine. I decluttered Half Light from Ritual Defeat. I know Amanda Z really loves that one. It just never really looked that great on my personal complexion. I find that products that look a little bit smoky, like look a little sooty, tend to just dull my eye color. Whereas I want something that's gonna pop my eye color. It's exactly the same reason why I decluttered the Victoria Beckham Eyewear eyeshadow stick in uh, caramel, I believe. And if you haven't seen my recent declutter, I have a part one, which is all base products, 
and a part two, which is eyes and lips. I'll leave one of them on the screen above and I'll put all the videos mentioned in the description box as well. But over the years, I think I've just realized that those kind of sooty shades are not really the best thing for me. They also creased on me pretty badly and they didn't really look good enough to warrant keeping them. So yeah, not a favorite. Um, and the next thing I have is the Tom Ford cream color for eyes in the shade Platinum. Um, this one is particularly gorgeous. I have always been so obsessed with the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, um, and I love that formula, but this one actually beats it because it's a little bit like thinner, I think. The Eyes to Mesmerize is definitely like a little bit thicker, maybe. This just goes on like a dream. I did end up decluttering the Tom Ford eyeshadow in platinum. That was just a color thing for me. I also don't reach for cream like mousses as much anymore. I really haven't been reaching for my Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize and that was a former favorite. My favorite shade from Eyes to Mesmerize was originally called Marie Antoinette and then they renamed it Oyster Pearl. And Oyster Pearl from Charlotte Tilbury was a little bit more warm than Tom Ford Platinum. Tom Ford Platinum was kind of like this cool toned antiqued bronze that had a little bit of olive in it and it was a little bit more silvery and light like a platinum would suggest. Just not the best shade for me. So I did eventually declutter that. Let's do some palettes. I've first up got the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz palette. Um, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, I have to be honest, I haven't gotten a ton of use out of this, but when I have played with this, I have absolutely loved it. I think the colors here are just so freaking stunning. Um, I particularly wanted this palette for this kind of violet shade with a blue shift. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, Aether Beauty, you know, I think I got like five uses out of that palette and then I eventually decluttered it. I, I did really like it when I filmed this video and I was excited about it, but over time I just never reached for it. I felt like the formula was quite sheer in pigment. Um, none of the colors really did anything for me. Yeah, it just wasn't a brand I really connected with. This next one, I know a lot of you wanna see. This is the 24 Shadow Custom Color Pop palette that I put together uh, a few weeks ago. I'm gonna do a full video on this. I'm gonna do swatches of everything. I'm gonna talk. I never did a full video on that. I promised so many people I was gonna do a video and like a full review on the ColourPop press shadows and the custom palettes. And I never did because I never ended up using it. I realized over time, I just didn't really like the formula. Um, the press, I mean, the mattes were fine, but the shimmers, I don't know. They were kind of, they were kind of something and I don't really remember them enough. I actually still have that palette. I never decluttered it because I, I just don't really look at my palette drawer anymore, to be honest. Like it's just kind of in the back of my mind. But I remember I would reach for some of those more special iconic ColourPop shades, like Glass Bowl was one, you know, a couple others like that. And then over time I was like, they're not actually really that flattering on me. Hold on, I need a lip topper. Yeah, you know, the ColourPop palettes, they were okay. They were okay. I think this is actually a great reminder that I should just go declutter that right now. Thumper was inside and he was whining to go outside. I completely forgot what I was talking about, but I think I had just said that I was decluttering the ColourPop custom palette. Hope you guys are ready for a doozy because I got a shitload of lip products. I have um, the Kosas, Kosas Sport Lip Fuel in the shade Pulse. Um, this is pretty close to their color, uh, the lipstick Stardust, and it's really minty. Um, it's this beautiful kind of rosy tan color. And I hated this at first, totally hated it. Um, I thought it was like a thick kind of dry lip balm. And every time I put it on, it always got on my teeth. So I just got really annoyed by that and stopped using it. But my friend Emma, her channel um, or her Instagram is cute cream. She loves the Costa sport balms and they have hyaluronic acid. So they do have some really good ingredients in there. Um, Hmm, yeah, I definitely don't like the Costa Sport Bombs for a variety of reasons. At the time, I wasn't quite as sensitive to mint as I am now. Now I just really prefer other scents and lip products. What I liked about the Costa Sport product was it was kind of a matte bomb, and I thought that was really cool. I also really loved the color pulse. It did remind me of Stardust, but it was the shape of the bullet that really bothered me no matter what I did when I applied that. It would just get all over my lip lines because it was a little bit too thick. I eventually ended up decluttering that one, and I also felt like it made my lips feel drier. It just was not the best. Also been loving the Ilia tinted lip conditioner in the shade Little Sister. Um, first off, I also hated this too when I first got it, or not this one, but it was the shade Arabian Nights. I threw that out after using it for a couple weeks. I just like could not deal with this packaging. 
I don't know if I've got like some weird audio thing going on, but when I hear this packaging, like, hold on. Mm -mm. Do you hear that? I can't do it. I never got the hype about the Ilia tinted lip conditioner. It felt really drying and slippery on my lips. It was unscented, but it smelled like crayons in a really bad way. But the metal packaging, I have goosebumps all over my arms because uh, even just imagining the, oh my God, I can't do it. I get like nauseous when I imagine metal touching metal. I, I can't, even, we're gonna move on. I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> So I went with this instead. I just got it and I've been loving it. It may not be my favorite texture, but it certainly is my favorite color. Next up, real Yeah, okay, so the Little Sister Tinted Lip Conditioner from Ilia, definitely, I still agree with that. I did not like the texture of it, so I'm glad that I mentioned that. I loved the color of it. It was a beautiful, warm rose, and I feel like I'm still searching for a color like that. It's seemingly basic, but somehow difficult to find. Next up, real quick, you guys all know this product already. It's the Glossier Lip Gloss in the shade Red. Um, I had never tried the Glossier Lip Glosses before this. I really like it. Um, this is the gloss I go to when I'm like gonna be in a meeting at work for a long time and I don't want a product to fade. This will stay glossy for like the whole hour and a half meeting. Um, it'll still be there by the end and it's definitely on the thicker, stickier side. That's why it sticks around. The color is quite sheer. So, you know, don't get this if you want it to show up like this, but it just kind of makes your lips look like juicy and flushed and it stays for a long time. So. Yeah, I agree with all that. I did eventually declutter it. I just, there, there are things that I prefer so much more than that now. I did feel like it was on the stickier side and I like sticky products because I just find them more comfortable and more long lasting and I don't like anything that slips and slides around. But I felt like it didn't have enough pigment for me to really care about it. I also just prefer products that have a little bit of a nice sweet uh, vanilla or fruity scent to it. So I, yeah, that was another product where I bought it because everybody loved the Glossier lip glosses. And then I tried it and I was like, it's just a lip gloss. <laughs> I like it. It's gonna be a lot more glosses. I've got the Kosas Wet Oil Lip Glosses in the shades Dip and Jaws. Um, Dip is by far my favorite. And I'm, these glosses are like so controversial, I feel like, because they're hella expensive and you don't get a lot of product, but they're so good. They really are good. And at first I was like not wanting to like them because it was expensive and, you know, I was just like, oh, I don't wanna pay that much, but. I really do like them. I really do. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. Wow, times have changed. I certainly don't bat an eye at expensive makeup anymore. I think I've definitely leaned more into the luxury stuff than I used to. I think I was just saying more so that you really didn't get much product in there. I mean, I remember dip I used to use all the time. I loved that color. The creamsicle scent was a little aggressive for me. I don't love a creamsicle scent. They always smell really artificial. But the texture of the Kostas glosses, I loved. I mean, it was on the more thin and slippery side for a gloss, but I just felt that they were really beautiful and it was really buttery. It didn't feel oily, even though they're called a lip oil. It felt buttery. And I liked that. And I thought Dip was just a beautiful, muted, warm beige. If they had a different scent, I would buy one again. We're getting in the home stretch. I promise. You're tired. I'm tired. I get it. Uh, but I love these Persona glosses. I had to talk about them because I just feel like they're so nice. Um, they're really kind of, they're just like a really good basic gloss. They're not drying at all. They have beautiful, beautiful color. Okay, I'm not gonna make you sit there for too long. Uh, Persona just discontinued their glosses and broke my heart in the process. Toffee was one of my all-time favorite lip products. I went through two tubes of that. Ugh, I loved that one. Yeah, I asked the brand if they were discontinuing a lot of their products and they said yes. So I'm super bummed about that. If you go on the website, a ton of their stuff is gone. RIP Persona glosses. The Sunny Space Lip Dips. I've talked about these before, but I feel like no one talks about them and I just want someone to talk to me about these products so we can talk about how good they are. Girl, we can talk to each other because I still feel the same way. Nobody talks about them and they're so good. Here I am three and a half, four years later, I don't know. And Sunny Space actually ships to the US now and I still do not hear people talk about the Lip Dip formula. It is still my favorite matte lip cream formula and I actually realized I just forgot to include it in my 2023 makeup favorites even though it's my favorite matte lip formula. Shit, I hate when that happens. But it is still my favorite matte lip formula. It is like the M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Cream in the sense that it feels very balmy and it's more of like a powder matte lipstick. 
lipstick. I'm sure the reference point everybody will know is like the MAC Powder Kiss liquid lipsticks. Personally, I found those to be really drying and I hated the applicator. It was super dumb. The Sunny Space is the most comfortable. It feels like that powdery matte cream liquid lipstick and it just felt balmy and so comfortable. And I just felt like their shades were something that I hadn't really seen that often before. Girl Crush is still one that I reach for all the time. And I think So Good is probably my second favorite. Both of those shades are quite unique in my opinion. And they have a fruity candy smell, which I really, really like. Mine are starting to turn. I'm still using the same ones from this video in 2019 and they are starting to expire now. I could tell that the smell is a little off. So I think I'm gonna place another order on the Sunny Space website because they're also just kind of nearing the end of the tube. We're almost there. Last product is my favorite product of all of 2019 and probably beyond. Um, it is a lip product, unsurprisingly, and I am looking down because I'm trying not to drop all of them because I love them so much. They are the Fit Glow Lip Serums. <sighs> these are so good. I hate that I love these. I hate that I love these. They are stupid expensive. Like if you thought the Kosas glosses were expensive, Kosas is a fucking walk in the park compared to these Fit Glow Lip Serums. One of these babies is $42, $42 for a lip gloss. But I too, I'm sure you're over there and you're like, fuck you, Kate. That's ridiculous. I will never do that. I was you. I was like, I will never do that. I will never buy it. I was watching a bunch of clean beauty gurus and they all talked about them. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Then I did some sleuthing on the internet and I found that the company Aurora Beauty uh, offers the Fit Glow lip serums as samples for $5 each. And you can get most of the colors except for like the limited edition ones. Um, so okay. <laughs> Little did I know they would go on to be my most consistent brand partner ever. So funny. The love of the Ficlo lip serums was so real. I hadn't yet started looking into the ingredients and why they were so expensive. Now I don't bat an eye at that price point because now I know the quality of the ingredients and what goes into them. And Ficlo is a skincare first makeup second company, unlike a lot of other brands that claim to be all about skincare meets makeup, kind of like Kosas. Ficlo actually starts with skincare as the base first and then builds the makeup around that and adds in mineral pigments, which from what I've heard is totally different from the process that other brands have. They have like plant collagen, pomegranate sterols, they have antioxidants. They have just have a whole bunch of ingredients that really help to plump the lips over time. And they are still some of the best formulas I've ever tried. Um, I feel like I'm kind of finally getting more confident about doing my makeup. And now I have so many wonderful things to play with. So I hope you made it through that long. I hope you've tried some of these products. If you've tried them um, and you like them or you don't like them, let me know what you think. Damn, I started getting emotional there. It's just like so, I don't know, it's really weird to like look, look back at yourself on camera from like four years ago and to talk about getting confident on camera and starting to feel confident in my makeup skills, my confidence just totally got destroyed <laughs> later on down the line with like a ton of different hate that I received over the years. And I really miss like the, the beautiful innocence that that person had. And it just, I don't know, it makes me emotional. I thought that I would be really cringy and really embarrassed the entire time. I feel like most people, when they watch their um, their YouTube videos back, they're just like, oh, you're so terrible and horrible. And I don't know, I just have a lot of like love and empathy for that person who had no idea what they were doing, who always had a dream to launch a YouTube channel, but was told by so many people in her life that it was a dumb idea and it was vapid and stupid. You know, I waited until I was 29 to start my channel, even though I wanted to start it when I was 18 in 2008. And just looking back, if I had ignored everybody else's opinions and my own insecurity and self-doubt, if I had started my channel in 2008, think of where I could be now. So if you have a dream and you're scared about doing it and you're scared of failure and you're scared of looking like an idiot and you're listening to other people's opinions, I'm here to tell you, be yourself, go for your dreams and fuck everybody else. Because at the end of the day, only you care about what you're doing with your life. And you're the one who has to live with yourself. And you have to look back on your life and you're the one who has to be happy and satisfied.
satisfied with how you lived it. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm learning guitar. I've been working at a radio station. I have my YouTube channel. I might want to get into talent buying or, or something else in the music field. And if you want to start a beauty channel, let me know. I would love to send you advice. I would love to help support you and encourage you in any way you need. I want to give a quick shout out to Matilda on video. I actually started my channel because of her. We became friends over Instagram well over four years ago before I even had a beauty Instagram account and she's just the best. She told me, start your channel. I believe in you. I'll watch you. And I did it. So I have to give Matilda a special shout out because I really needed that encouragement from someone who I really valued and someone I looked up to who was so fantastic in the beauty space. So if you want to start a beauty channel and you need a little bit of encouragement, let me know and I would love to chat with you. I hope you like this fun little video. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I could turn it into a series and I can react to all the other videos on my channel that are really old. This was super fun and wow, I was not expecting to realize how much my makeup preferences had changed. It's really quite different. I'm also planning on doing a get ready with me where I do my makeup in the style of 2015, how I used to do it, and another video talking about how my makeup style has evolved throughout the years. So I don't know, I like those little nostalgic videos and I really like watching them when other people film them. If you like this video, please help me out and click the like button. It helps more people to find my channel. And wherever in the world you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'm sending you lots of love.